winter time's coming. It's that time of year again when we're all thinking about putting our chainsaws, our weed eaters, our leaf blowers away for the season, away for the winter, till we need them again in the springtime. Thanks for coming back to the Small Engine Saloon. I'm Steve. Today I am going to show you how to, well, first of all, how to drink some Coors out of a banquet can. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I'm drinking the last one, buddy. I'm not just going to stand here and show you how to drink beer all day. I'm also going to show you how to winterize your two strokes, two cycle engines. You put mixed gas in it, it's a two cycle, two stroke engine. That's what we're talking about today. Why are we doing this? Well, have you ever taken your weed eater out in the fall time and you know damn well that it's the last time you're going to use your weed eater for the season. You use it for the last time, you go put it in your garage. Five, six months later, you go, hey, my grass is growing again, I got to get my weed eater out again. You go to start it and it won't start. Of course it won't start. You didn't winterize it properly. Okay, so before we get into the actual winterizing long-term storage of your equipment, really quickly here, I'm going to show you, in my opinion, what is a better method for maintaining your equipment through the off-season, through the winter. It's called exercising your equipment. How we do that, we want to go to the gas station and get some nice, fresh, brand new fuel. Mix it up like you should and fill your tank right to the top your fuel tank on your unit fill it to the top the reason that i say that is because these two stroke engines have these tiny little um, cube carburetors on here they hold a tiny little bit of fuel inside that carburetor a small amount of fuel goes bad it goes rancid it deteriorates far faster than a larger quantity of fuel that would be in your fuel tank. Your fuel tank is going to go rancid and bad faster than a larger quantity, say in a jerry can. That's just the way it works. So fill your tank right to the top. Then what you need to do, how many people don't have a smartphone in their pocket nowadays? Set an alarm on your, on your smartphone that tells you exercise your equipment. Set it for once a month. Go start your engine every month. I don't care if there's a snowbank out there. Take your weed eater right out in the snowbank, fire it up, run it, rev it up till it's running properly, till it idles properly. It's going to be like two minutes you're gonna say, hey, this thing runs absolutely perfectly. That's awesome. Now go put it away. Next month, do it again. Keep doing that every month. What that's doing is exercising the engine. It's exercising that carburetor. It's displacing the fuel that's already in the, your carburetor, which is probably already starting to go bad after a month. And it's exercising those little, that little metering diaphragm, the fuel pump diaphragm, those little check valves that are inside that carburetor. It's exercising those. That is hands down the best way to maintain your equipment through the off season and through the winter. Now, when you actually need to use this thing and go cut some grass or your chainsaw, you gotta go cut some wood, now I need to go blow some leaves with my leaf blower. You know it's going to start and run properly because it already just did not even a month ago. Now I understand that there's a lot of us out there that um, can't do this. We don't want to do it. We don't have the time to do it. Uh, possibly you're storing your equipment in a storage container somewhere. You can't, you don't even have the access or the opportunity to go do that. Well now we have to talk about actually truly winterizing this for long-term storage. Okay, so here we go. 
I'm going to take you guys step by step through how to winterize this leaf blower right here for long-term storage. Number one, what we want to do is stabilize the gas. Fuel stabilizer is the most important thing in my opinion. Fuel stabilizer is a fuel treatment product that you mix with your fuel that keeps your fuel from going bad, keeps it from deteriorating, um, going rancid as fast as untreated fuel. This is hands down the number one thing you want to do. They come in different manufacturers, uh, different quantities. It doesn't matter if it says fuel stabilizer on it, use it. Now, some of you guys are holding up your little uh, bottle of mix oil right now. And then you're going, yeah, but it says contains fuel stabilizer right on there. Right in your mix oil. Ignore that. There is nowhere near enough fuel stabilizer in one of these, in my opinion, to do this properly. Just ignore the fact that that says contains fuel stabilizer in it. Go get yourself some more fuel stabilizer. Follow the directions on it and mix yourself up some good fuel stabilized gas right here. Put it in your gas tank. Now we got fuel stabilized gas in your fuel tank and now what we want to do step number two is we want to run this thing. Obviously don't run this enclosed in a, in a garage like this. You guys can't see what I got here. I got all my windows and doors open. I got fans going through here. I got wicked ventilation in here. If you're doing this, take it outside and do this. We're gonna run it now. What running it does, now that you have the stabilized fuel in there, when you run it, it's coating the inside of your fuel tank. It's coating the uh, fuel uh, filter, the inside of your fuel line, right up into your carburetor. It's coating the little check valves in your carburetor. It's coating the metering diaphragm, the fuel pump diaphragm. It's coming into your engine, coating your engine also. That's what you want to happen. So we run it. Till it's warmed up. I'm gonna say yeah, two minutes is good. Do that for two minutes. Step number three, dump that gas out. Take a nice clean container like this. The ice cream pail is great. Dump all your fuel out. Dump all that fuel out into a clean container. And then if you do have a primer bulb on that thing, pump that primer bulb and it's gonna squish a little bit more gas out of that carburetor and then just keep dumping that out till there's no more fuel coming out of your tank. Now you can uh, just take that, that fuel out of that and just dump it right back in your, in your fuel can, save that till next year because that's good treated gas right there. That will stay fresh till next year. Do that if you want to. Step number four. We want to restart this thing now. There's no gas in the gas tank anymore. We want to restart this thing. And what we're going to do, it's going to fire right back up because there's still some gas in there. And we're going to shake it. Just shake it around as it's running until it dies. Watch this. Try choking it again if you want to. We're going to put the choke on. We'll see if this thing fires one more time. It did. Keep doing that. Choke it again. Keep going.
Now that's done. There is not one drop of gasoline left in that engine right there. It will not start, it will not run. That is a winterized engine right there as far as I'm concerned. That's how you do that. You can put that to bed for the winter. Theoretically, next year when you go fire this thing up, put some nice fresh gas back in there, pump your primer ball if you have a primer ball, it's gonna start right back up and run just like brand new again because you treated it properly, you winterized it properly. I hope I helped you guys out again. Hit that little thumbs up button if you like that. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope I might have saved you guys some money too because you didn't have to take it into the shop next spring because it didn't start. Till the next video guys, Steve out.